At today's project, I mean, normally we're working on motorcycles here almost every day. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Karen got this from a friend. It's called a gossip bench. Now, when these are refinished, she wants to have this for a permanent part of the house. So I want to do a really nice refinishing job on this. And I'll try to document it on this video how I would go about doing it. And the first part of the whole thing is going to be, i got to set up my work table because we haven't been working outside lately. Waiting for a day like today where it's not raining. I have to remove the cushion as the first thing. We're going to make a whole new cushion. And then I'm going to sand off the paint. All the paint has to be sanded, not down to bare wood, but just sanded that it's got a, a rough etched surface so that the new paint sticks. And then what I'll do is I'll have two choices. Choice one is going to be, I have the spray paint already. I don't know if that's going to be exactly what she wants, but if it's not shiny enough, we'll wait probably about seven to ten days and then put automotive clear. The same clear that's on all of the motorcycles that we restore, five star clear. And what I hope that'll do then is give it a, a nice layer of protection. Anyway, it's going to be an interesting project. I want to get started. Well, the first thing we need is to get this cushion off. Looks like it's on with just ordinary screws. And Karen, of course, will want to make, oh, she will make, a, a brand. It'll be like recovering a motorcycle seat. No big deal. All right, so the next step is to get out the power sanders, get out some sandpaper. And again, the idea is to get, just to get a little bit of an etch so that the paint sticks to this without a problem. And sometimes if you skip that step and you just paint right over this, after the job is done, you wish you would have done a little sanding. So we'll spend a little time with the sandpaper, get it all prepped up, and hope the sun comes out to cure the paint. Now we've got an ordinary orbital power sander with some 100 grit paper, just to roughen this up. Now the whole thing with this step, I don't need to get this all super, super smooth. The idea is to get it etched. And I forgot to mention one step, I wiped this down because this was really a, a piece of furniture that was in use and it had a lot of grease and stuff on. I wiped it down with simple green. That seemed to get, the, I forgot to put that step on the video. And the next step is the porter cable. And this is a little detail sander, lets you get in all the corners and edges. Any of these little edges that are hard to get. Remember, we just need to roughen it up. Now, of course, the last step is going to be to hand sand the parts. The big sander can get a lot of flats. This gets in a lot of little corners and edges, but there's some spots you really, that nothing takes the place of just hand sanding. What I'm doing in this step is all the little areas that you're going to see when you look at it from the view that most people will get. I want these to be extra, extra smooth, extra, extra nice. I'll put a little extra time on all the visible areas. So ultimately we have a sanding block and just some ordinary sandpaper. And ultimately now, and if you ever notice, furniture isn't finished on the bottom. 
But the trick is, if you're going to spend X amount of time, do it on the parts that you see. Now in this case, I'm going to see that edge. So I want that edge to be nice. And it's always the edge. If the edge doesn't roll real nice, you can see it right away. This will get us all the edges. Now when I'm done with the block, the final thing is, always do the block first, and the, the soft, that sticky back sandpaper, do that last. And the time you put into this, no matter how much time you put into it, in the end, you're going to see every minute that you put into it. The next step is get some compressed air. By the way, we have the world's loudest compressor. The idea is to get all the dust off and then we'll wipe it down with a tack rag before we put the primer on. But having the air hose to blow the air is a big help. Okay, this is an ordinary tack rag you can buy at Lowe's or any place. It's made to do just what we're going to do. It takes that last little bit of dust off so that the primer is going to stick better and not leave little dots and little rough spots. Now again, you don't have to sand this down for sure. In this case, you don't, and you certainly don't have to sand the parts of it that you're not going to see. We're not going to see under the cushion. In here, there's going to be books, but we are going to see up here. So the idea is the tack rag gets rid of the last little bit of the goop before we're ready to put the primer on. Okay, now this is Duplicolor Primer. This is the big word, sealer. Because what's going to happen if we don't seal this, you never know what paint is underneath it, what varnish, what material they use. And some of the paint we're going to be putting on it, modern paints, this paint may be 100 years old, who knows it will contaminate it and make it look like an alligator skin. So what this paint does is put a barrier in between, hopefully, that uh, will seal it up. Now the trick is with all primer, give it two coats, nice and thin. Don't try to put it on, uh, you know, don't try to get it to cover in one coat. It also is gonna etch the surface, chemically etch it just enough that the paint we put on is gonna stick or I shouldn't say stick, it's going to stick better than if we didn't do this. So I'll get the whole thing in prime, and it's going to dry for a half an hour. Once it dries, we'll be ready to put the color paint on. This is funny, I don't know, I don't know if you can see it, Karen's supervising from inside the building. Anyway, I found out one can gives me almost one coat on this. I want to get at least two coats and maybe three. I just want to get a good, uh, normally you wouldn't use this to, to level anything off if you're painting a motorcycle or something, but this we want to fill in some of the little spots. Maybe the wood's a little rough. Oh, she's coming out to supervise. I knew it. How's it look? Looking good? Okay. I have a tough boss. She's hard to work for. So we use two cans of primer. Gave it really two nice thick coats. That's going to dry a good half an hour or so, in which time I'll have a, uh, a nice cup of coffee. And I'll get the blue paint out. That uh, This is going to be a turquoise blue that matches a lot of the other stuff that we've been refinishing around the house. And this is the color. We bought three cans. One thing nice about using spray paint, very inexpensive. These cans are actually $4.95 a can. We, we may not even need all three cans. Now the temptation with spray paint is always to put it on too thick. And you can do some beautiful work with spray cans, but you just got to put thin coats on. Now this color, see if I try to cover this in one coat, because this, this paint sprays relatively thick. So I'm just going to dust it on. Let it dry 15, 20 minutes. It's very, very easy to get a run. I hope I don't get any. 
by dual course we can sand it out, but but the real temptation is don't try to do it in one big heavy coat. When you do it in one big heavy coat, you, you always you always have a problem. And this is, by the way, is really good coverage paint. Now with the second coat on, it's starting to look like what uh, Karen originally had in mind for this piece of furniture. And again, we've done several pieces around the house and made cornices and refinished and recovered stuff. Recovered motorcycle seats so we know that cushion will be no problem at all. But this, is, this has really been nice. And I will get the third, it's the second coat drying. I'll get the third coat on, take a picture of it, and celebrate. We've added one more heirloom to our, uh, our house. So I didn't want to end the video without mentioning something really important. And it's something we've learned in the world of motorcycling uh, over and over and over again. When you use this type of paint, and I don't know what to call this, it's even Rust-Oleum, Krylon, any of these paints, uh, I just call them modern paints. Now these paints dry relatively shiny. They have a nice finish. Now, but I do have a choice of putting ordinary automotive clear over that. But the trick is wait at least a week to 10 days and sometimes even after that if you've if you've kind of rushed it or if it's in a cold cellar if i can put this out in the sun what i'll do i'll put it out in the sun for uh well the next couple days anyway if it's not at night i'll put it in the garage but the idea is the sun will help bake that paint now there's always it's called outgassing in the world of paint there's always the chemicals in the paint that have to come out and it takes time lacquer comes out over a course of time I don't know about these modern paints the research work that I did for Randolph years ago for their dope products butyrate dope and nitrate dope it, it was very interesting how they come out with stuff and you could put one material over another but not this one over that one some under some some over some best to say just let it dry a week or if it's even better put it out in the sun anyway that is good information So as I'm getting ready to put this away, I'm going to put it in the garage, let it dry overnight, minimum before I bring it out and put it in the sun again. I will have another video on making the cushion. And we have a lot of videos out on our website. And over, I think there's over 1250 now, but I don't look every day, of course. But here's what uh, is important. There's a variety of stuff. It's not all motorcycles. It's not all any one subject. And it's, I try to share the information that I've learned over a lot of years of doing this. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and refinishing furniture, refinishing motorcycles. Pretty much the same thing. And thanks for watching. So what do I get? Is this a two thumbs up, a one thumbs up, or two thumbs up? Another heirloom project. Like great.